All right, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the document-based question essay, also known as the DBQ. This is the second of the uh, essay styles that you'll need to learn for the college uh, board exam in May. The question itself, or the essay itself, is similar to the LEQ, where you will get a question and a prompt to respond to. And rather than like the LEQ, where you're expected to have knowledge that is off the top of your head that you can use as evidence in support of your claims, the College Board provides usually seven documents in which you can use the, the evidence from those documents in supporting your claims. This is worth 25% of your uh, grade on the exam in May. And you get one question, you don't get choices unlike the LAQ. You get one question you have to answer. And a lot of my students in the past have talked about how much they love the DBQ over the LEQ because the DBQ at least provides that evidence and you can kind of get away not knowing or semi-knowing information about the topic because you can always just rely on the skills that you will learn, hopefully, and get um, in this presentation and in practice throughout the year to be able to successfully navigate the DBQ essay and write a good essay using that evidence and how you should use that evidence, right? So the DBQ is uh, usually a seven point rubric. Um, in the past or year in the 2020 um, year of COVID, um, that exam, they changed it to a 10 point uh, rubric. And we're not quite sure what they'll be using this year. If they do announce that they're going to use a 10 point rubric, we'll go over that at some point and talk about the 10 point rubric and how to write the essay using that. But it's not that all that different. It's just how it's scored. So you get one point free thesis. You get one point for contextualization, similar to the LEQ. In the DBQ, you get one point for the use of documents, and you have to use three total. Now, when I say use of documents, you have to use it in a way that supports your claim. If you simply just quote the document and say, here it is, but don't use it any way to, in support of your claim, it will not count towards the, the document count. You get another point if you successfully use six documents. So like I said, you get seven documents. If you can use six of the documents, then you get another point. And I always encourage students to use all seven documents anywhere they can in the event that you do not succeed in using one of the documents in a way that will get you that score. So just kind of give yourself that extra cushion. You get a point for using outside evidence, something we'll talk about later in the lecture. And you get a point for using the historical reasoning skill. So whatever the historical reasoning skill is being asked of you to uh, examine or analyze or whatever, um, it's either going to be typically comparison, um, causation, uh, you could, uh, change of con continuity. Um, those are the, the skills that you see at the LAQ, same with the DBQ, okay? And then you get the one point for showing the complex understanding of history, the unicorn point that we've talked about in the past. And so if you don't get this point, you know, it's very, very rare to do so on the DBQ. So don't stress if you can't, but uh, we'll talk about what that looks like a little bit later, okay? So step one, this looks, should look very familiar. If you watch the lecture on the LEQ, the DBQ is the very is much the same. The first step to it is reading and understanding the question. And if you don't understand the question, then how are you going to answer the question, which is the fundamental important part of any essay is ATQ, answer the question. So similar to what we did with the LEQ, you want to break down the question. If you are struggling to understand exactly what the question is, or even like to just ensure that you know what the question is asking, you should break it down and see what it is. So circle the subjects. The subjects are the responses to the spread of Buddhism in China in this example. And um, underline the verb, what's asking to do, analyze. Okay, so analyze the responses to the spread of Buddhism in China and the bracket, the boundaries of uh, your limits, the uh, time period. Here we are, 220 CE to 57 CE. Yeah, so I know this uh, topic, uh, this uh, example exceeds uh, beyond our you know, subject matter that we cover in class, but I'm just using this as an example. And like I said before, even if you have no prior background knowledge, you can still write a pretty good DBQ essay if you're following the steps that we're talking about today. So the next thing you do is to kind of brainstorm. And this is something that we'd ask you to do with the LEQ as well. Um, before you start writing, before you do anything else, start thinking about what do I know about this topic? And if you do know stuff, start writing it down. The reason why I tell you to do this, even before you start breaking into the documents, is because you might bring something up that you can recall from your, uh, your knowledge banks and um, you know, as you go through the documents and you identify, you know what? They don't talk about this, but this is important. You can use that as outside evidence in your um, 
essay, which is one of the hardest points to get in the DPQ, in my opinion, um, behind the unicorn point, right? So make sure you think of, uh, you know, even of both similarities and differences, think about both similarities and differences. Um, think about, um, you know, change in continuity, think about causation. In this case, for our little example, think about the different responses um, that could have happened as a result of the spread of Buddhism into East Asia, some of the stuff we've actually talked about in class. So after you evaluate the question and such, uh, then start uh, reading through the documents. Now, reading through the documents, um, you know, the documents themselves, always look at the source, know what the source is. If you know who that person is, or um, if it mentions like, you know, some of them will say a Confucian scholar, what do you know about Confucianism? Um, what is like the perspective, the point of view where they're going to come from? So the, there's clues, not just in the, the reading itself, but also in the, uh, um, the source. And so make sure you, you take advantage of that. Now, in the documents, you're looking for the responses to Buddhism, right? You're looking for evidence of how people responded when Buddhism came into China. So one strategy that I think is very effective and something that helps with your pre-write and your brainstorming is to do something called bucketing. And bucketing is where you basically you create categories for what the documents fall under. And so as you are reading through this, you know, uh, document, you say, oh, this person's response to it was they viewed it as a, uh, a foreign plague. OK, so hostile. Right. So I create a bucket for hostile. I just put social, political, cultural, just to give you an understanding. But I create a bucket that, you know, Buddha, there were, people were hostile towards Buddhism. Right. So here I have one document that fits into that category. And I read another one. I was like, this one is like hostile too. I'm going to put that in that same bucket. The reason why you do this is because when you go through it and you identify through the documents, like what falls into what category, it essentially sets you up your body paragraphs. You can simply say, yeah, well, some were this and some were this and some were this. And then when you get to your body paragraphs, that's where you use these evidence. So this strategy is really helpful in getting you to organize your thoughts and let the documents write the essay for you in a way that not to say just quote the documents, but let the documents tell you what you need to include in your essay. OK, um, so, you know, in this case, you know, I look at uh, all the documents and say A, C and D are kind of examples of social ones and documents B are political responses or document F is cultural responses. And these are not the categories that you need to use. It's simply an example. OK, that it doesn't have to fit into these categories. You can make the categories as you want. But if you struggle to think about what can I use these for, always think about our themes in, in world history, okay? Um, you know, a, a human environment interaction, um, social, cultural, economics, political. Um, so think about those things as you're going through if, if you're having struggle to really narrow in on specific the examples or specific categories, okay? So the documents themselves, will present themselves, you know, in documents one or document A, B, whatever. So I put the documents onto this PowerPoint and uh, I would like you to go through it. The document, the PowerPoint is connected to the, the Canvas page itself uh, for, that where you find this video. So I would pause this video now and take some time to read through the documents and think about how would you categorize these and, and bucket them yourself, okay? And it doesn't have to be the same as me, but how would you do it? So go ahead and pause the video at this time and then go through the um, uh, documents themselves, okay? All right, so hopefully you've had time to go through the documents. And uh, the next part of uh, writing the DPQ starts with the introduction, right? Hopefully you have an idea of how you wanna outline your, your essay, you've organized it into the, the documents, into different categories and so forth. So just like in the LAQ, you're gonna start with deep uh, context. And the context is that simple, what's leading up to the period it has to be three sentences in my uh, uh standards it must relate to the topic of the essay um in the laq some of you did this very well some of you didn't try at all some of you tried but failed to do enough details to give me the sense of understanding of context okay so this is something that we'll continue to practice more so as the year goes on and remember all my lectures always start with context so think about those things like i talk about kind of what's the situation leading up to this and how does it drop us into what's going on in this particular time period particular topic whatever it is okay 
So the example I have for you is the Buddha is uh, in a sermon defined nature nat uh, nature of life as suffering and identified what he saw as uh, the cause. His solution, the abandoning of desire, became popular not only in India, but later China. If I wanted to extend that, I would probably say it traveled to China through the missionaries that traveled on the Silk Road. Okay. Um, anyway, the next part is a thesis, and the thesis is really important because it really sets up the entirety of your paper. It is your claim. It is your answer to the question, uh, your simple answer to the question. And we must answer all parts of the question include, that must be included in that claim, right? So we talked about the two different styles, same thing as before, simple and split complex. The simple thesis will get you the point, but it does make it harder for you to get that historical reasoning and uh, the complexities of history um, point, the unicorn point, um, when you write this way. Which, if you don't know how to go about doing that, then the simple thesis will just be fine, okay? So here is an example of a simple thesis. Responses to the spread of Buddhism in China differed to a high extent, remember I'm answering the question, because of the nature of Buddhism, those who preferred the spirituality of religion and those who disliked it because of not reflecting Chinese. So I've got my three categories here. The nature of Buddhism, the preferred spirituality of the and the spirituality of the religion, um, and then th or those who preferred it and those who disliked it. And so I'm going to go through and use those documents that fit into those areas as my evidence. Split complex thesis, it's it's more focus and so forth. Yeah, you can use yeah, at least three areas of focus that you want. So although Buddhism began in India in the sixth century, it spread to China in the first millennium CE, invoked responses that differ to a high extent because of those who preferred spirituality of the religion and those who disliked it because it was foreign. So I've got it set up to where I can cover um, plenty of information uh, as the documents present to me, okay? So the body paragraphs are something of um, different as compared to what we talk about the LEQ. Um, you still are going to have to have start your um, body paragraph with a topic sentence, okay? But they must include your claim, which is your topic sentence, the document evidence, whatever you're using, one document, two documents, three documents, more. It, you want to use those documents where they fit into that particular part of your claim, okay? And you need an explanation, an explanation of how this document supports your claim itself. So that's really important because if you don't just write out the documents and they kind of like they show this, explain how that how that shows that. So you need to be able to do that uh, in order to get the evidence point for the um, for the rubric. Okay. Each paragraph I mentioned starts the topic sentence, and don't forget, same as the the, the thesis, use the language of the question as much as you can, all right? Um, so here's some examples, and I'm not gonna read them, um, but you're welcome to go through these examples of what those topic sentences would look like, okay? Then we move into the document evidence. The document evidence uh, is really important in doing certain things. Number one, do not quote the documents, okay? When you quote the documents, especially when you quote large sections of the documents, the only thing you're telling the reader is that I don't know what this says. So I'm just hoping you will give me a pass. And if I just say what the document says. So don't do that. In order to get the point for that document, you must first paraphrase that document. And then you must also talk about how this document supports the claim that you are trying to make. And remember, avoid first person. You are writing in an academic sense. You so kind of how it looks like the Buddha and sermon define nature and life. Oh, wait. Um, nature life identified what he saw. His solution in Benny Desire became popular only in India later in China. So that's kind of what showed in document one, if you've read that, okay? Um, make sure you cite the text, both in text and um, and uh, at the end of the, you know, the sentence that you use that document and such. So, um, you know, according to Buddha, uh, according to um, the Confucian scholar, According to whatever it is, make sure you name the source in text, and then you need to um, put in parentheses, uh, document, whatever it is. So that's the way I want you to cite the documents throughout your reading. Okay. The next thing part is the outside evidence point, one of the most difficult to get. Just as similar as what we do in the LEQ, where you use an outside evidence or evidence from your knowledge banks and, and uh, putting it in as uh, supporting evidence to your claims. 
you're going to do the same thing with this. This is very difficult to do because um, it, the outside evidence point must be something that doesn't come from the documents. It must relate to the topic. It must be specific, just like, you know, the straw nouns and specific examples that we've talked about in the LEQ. And it must be used in a way to support your claim. So you can't just say, oh, random trivial fact here, bam. No, it has to be something that supports whatever you're arguing in your paper, okay? So an example, the type of Buddhism that became popular in Northern China was known as Mayana Buddhism. That's outside evidence, okay? And so that, yeah, as long as it supports your claim that uh, it came to China and, you know, if I wanted to extend this, I would probably talk about Mayana Buddhism and kind of how it supports the idea of service um, and finding enlightenment through service and helping others reach enlightenment too. Okay. So the document analysis itself, um, this is the, where you can get that extra point. Um, for at least three documents, you must try to um, go beyond just simply stating what the document says, uh, paraphrasing and how it supports your claim, but also talk about why this document is a uh, relative piece of information. Either talk about the point of view that it's uh, presenting, talk about the purpose of the document, the historical situation, the intended audience, who the author is, anything that gives us more understanding of why this evidence is relative to your argument, relative to the topic. So to earn this point, you must do that. You really rather can't I just identify. You have to talk about those things. So something I use, uh, two things I use, and, and whichever one you want to do is fine. I always typically call it capping the documents. So you talk about the context. This document is written in the era of this, which was, you know, these things were going on. So that's why it's, it's re related because, you know, they were, um, you know, there at the time or something along those lines. Okay. Uh, who the intended audience is and what's the purpose of the documents. Um, HIP is another one, um, you know, which talking about the historical context the intended audience, the purpose of the document, and also the point of view of the document. So this comes from the point of view of Confucian scholar, and the Confucian scholars um, tended to um, you know, look at Buddhism differently because it, it differed from their own system of belief, okay? Uh, so, which would explain why they would not view it as a friendly and more of a hostile um, belief system as it approached into China, some of those lines, okay? Um, so, Zhang Mi, uh, who is um, a J Chinese Confucian scholar, um, who talks about, um, you know, Buddha and Confucius uh, being kind of the perfect sages, um, meaning they, they kind of bring balance to one another. He's kind of one of the um, scholars that kind of, I wouldn't say creates, but um, opens the door for the Neo-Confucianism itself. So here's an example of kind of how to use that in a way where you are analyzing the documents themselves, okay? Step five is the analysis. And so, you know, make sure at some point you're talking about and using the historical reasoning skills uh, to frame like the entirety of your um, arguments, same we did with the LEQ. So make sure if you are getting a question that's asking you to compare, make sure you do comparison, both similarities and differences throughout your paper. Causation, showing cause and effect throughout the paper. Change of country, third show change, how it changed, and how things continued throughout the paper, okay? So create those topic sentences. Make sure that they relate directly to your thesis. I mean, just write a portion of your thesis as your topic sentence, and then it sets you up for that, that paragraph. Um, as you do this throughout the entirety of your essay, um, you will likely get this point. And the reasoning skill, the unicorn point and such, it's like I mentioned before, it's not consistently scored from AP readers. If you write a fantastic essay, um, then you may get this point. Uh, I rewarded it to a couple of people with the LEQ and the pre previous LEQ because they had some really excellent essays. And I appreciated the effort they went into going to throughout the paper, providing strong evidence um, of uh, addressing the historical reasoning skill. Um, and, you know, even showing some complexities of the thinking about history as well. Um, could they have done better? Yes. But, you know, that is, you know, really, um, you know, at this point in the, the class, it was not necessary. Okay. 
So here's a sample essay, and I'm going to stop the video now, and I would encourage each one of you to read through this essay, see what it looks like. Um, I have to give a shout out to Mr. Watts, uh, who is the other AP World teacher here at Skyline High. Um, he's the one who wrote this example. He's a phenomenal teacher and uh, a great teacher of the writing. And so um, everything I've learned about writing AP history essays, which is about everything, I learned from him. So great credit to him. And so that's why I'm mentioning him here at the end of the video. The DBQ will be done next time in class, um, and uh, it will be related to Unit 2 material. So make sure that you take time to review it and finish the lectures if you haven't done so already. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on email or sign up for my virtual office hours. Um, but that concludes our How to DBQ. I will see you all, all hopefully very soon.